Today is Holy Saturday. Yesterday we remembered the death of Jesus and tomorrow we celebrate his resurrection. But today is Holy Saturday. It's not time for Easter eggs yet. Today is a day in which we're encouraged to think about life and death and to wonder what happens to us when we die. It's a day to think about the dead, our families, our friends, and those we'll never know. Traditionally, Holy Saturday is the day that Jesus descended into hell and set the captives free. In death as in life, Jesus was setting people free. Whatever we make of this tradition, there is truth behind it. Jesus is no stranger to human death. He has been there before us. Death and life are part of who we are, part of what makes us human, part of being mortal and alive. On Holy Saturday, we remember those who have died and know them to be safe in God. Matthew 27, verses 57 to 66. When it was evening, there came a rich man from Arimathea named Joseph, who was also a disciple of Jesus. He went to Pilate and asked for the body of Jesus. Then Pilate ordered it to be given to him. So Joseph took the body and wrapped it in a clean linen cloth and laid it in his own tomb, which he had hewn in the rock. He then rolled a great stone to the door of the tomb and went away. Mary Magdalene and the other Mary were there, sitting opposite the tomb. The next day, that is, after the day of preparation, the chief priests and the Pharisees gathered before Pilate and said, Sir, we remember what the impostor said while he was still alive. After three days, I will rise again. Therefore, command that the tomb be made secure until the third day, otherwise his disciples may go and steal him away and tell the people he has been raised from the dead. And the last deception would be worse than the first. Pilate said to them, you have a guard of soldiers, go, make it as secure as you can. So they went with the guard and made the tomb secure by sealing the stone. Romans 8, 38 and 39. For I am convinced that neither death nor life, nor angels nor rulers, nor things present nor things to come, nor powers nor height nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God that is ours through Christ Jesus our Lord. Let us pray. God of love, we have all gathered at the graves of loved ones, mourned for them, wept for them, grieved for them. We have experienced the sense of loss, the aching emptiness, the feeling of being all alone, the broken heart, our world crushed, darkness, consuming us. God of love, how must you be feeling, knowing the pain and the agony of losing your son? Together we recognize the awfulness of this moment. Together we have experienced what grief is like. Together we have longed for another outcome. Together we have wished to avoid death. Yet, its inevitability is as real now as it has always been. Loving God, is this a journey we all need to make? 
at the gravesides of our beloveds, to lay down our flowers and our keepsakes in memory and tribute to what has been, and then to light the candles of hope that says we will not let the darkness overwhelm us because there is more still to come. With you, O oh God, there is always more. So we stand beside each other today in reality or virtually and we comfort each other, help each other, support each other until you call us all to glory. Amen.